And okay, Super. please, so, Claude, over to you. Thanks, Aoife. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the latest webinar from the Cluster Centre with Aoife Fox-Williams joining us this morning or this evening from New Zealand. Uh, the Cluster Centre is an Irish SME who supports cluster development by working with clusters and with policymakers. I'm delighted to welcome back Aoife, from CEO with Cluster Navigators Limited, who is acknowledged as one of the most influential cluster practitioners in the world. His hands-on experience in 50 countries. Aoife is a founder and past president of the TCI Network, the leading global network of organisations and practitioners with expertise in clusters and competitiveness. He has served on competitiveness and cluster advisory boards for the EU, Denmark, Indi India, Africa, and Mexico. Aoife has been an advisor to the World Bank, EU, OECD, aid agencies, and national and regional economic development agencies on six continents. Our topic for today is clustering for policymakers, where Aoife will explore the role of government, the role of universities, the role of trade commissioners, and smart specialization. Aoife will return on the 11th of May to deliver his four-week cluster development program in Ireland. The ground rules for today. Aoife will present for approximately 25, 30 minutes. We suggest that you use the chat function to post your comments and questions during this time. Today's session is being recorded, and without further delay, I'll pass you over to Aoife and we will get started. Cloda, good morning to you. As, as we would say in Wales, my first, first language, Boredai Paub, good morning to you all. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Cloda, for inviting me to participate, to share with you, to share with you in part my learning from, from different parts of the world. and want to share with you what I've picked up from places, including Tucson, Arizona, and good to have Bob Barol on, on, on the Zoom. Bob has taken the lead in developing the optics cluster in Tucson, and Bob, I'd like you to come in later. Let, let, me, let me start by explaining what a cluster is. Let me start, in fact, with my agenda. This is what I want to talk about. Some international examples. I want to share with you how national and regional public agencies around the world, the, the equivalent of the IDA, the equivalent of Enterprise Island, the equivalent of the Nor Nor Northern Ireland government, the equivalent of county councils in, in different corners of Ireland, a proactive in kickstarting clustering initiatives, proactive in being a long-term partner in cluster development. I wanna share with you a little bit how cluster development provides a framework in part to stimulate exports amongst SMEs, helping exporters hunt as a pack, in part to develop links between tertiary institutions. I wanna share with you one of the main complications, difficulties in cluster development, getting public agency alignment, removing silos, but also removing silos between businesses, developing what is often called cooperation amongst businesses, where businesses respect each other as competitors, but are also able to collaborate. And I want to share with you too, how cluster development is used as a framework to address transitions, to address emergencies, COVID, green economy, digitalization. And as Cloda mentioned, a little bit on the, the cluster development course that Cloda is organizing for May. Let me start not in Tucson, Arizona. Bob, if I knew you were coming in, I, I, I'd, have been, I'd have put Tucson on here. But let me start in Nashville. And want to use Nashville as an example of, it's a naturally occurring cl cluster. No, no government agency has invented it. It has come through naturally. Initially, in, in a sense, the local market and then the US market, and now literally making a noise around the world. And, and many clusters start servicing the local market as National did way back. A food cluster in Holland, known today as Food Valley, again, started naturally, but today it is the food mega cluster on a global scale, close to 1500 food companies within a 50 kilometer distance within the functional region of this cluster. Wagening University, very much a focal point. It's a naturally occurring cluster, 
but there is also a cluster organization there. A cluster organization that is in part exploring what's next in developing our ecosystem. What's next in lifting the competitiveness of our firms? What's next perhaps in terms of emerging international markets? What's next in terms of new food packaging technologies? It's not a small team, 20, maybe in fact, I think 25, 26 people today. It's got a board, it's triple helix. It's not a junior board, the university president, the director is on the board. It, it's an initiative that has been running for many years. It was initially co-funded by the Dutch government. It's now co-funded by the regional government. And now it's mainly in, 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 in Holland, the regional governments that, that are funding clustering initiatives such as this. We take you to Australia. Food Industry Australia is a Canberra based, it's a national organization fully funded by government. They launched a competition last year to identify a number of food clusters, regional food clusters to support across Australia. We take you into one of those. It's called the Food and Agri Business Network. It's just north of Brisbane on, on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. 320 businesses, support organizations, public agencies, polytechnics, vocational training, its chefs, its food providers, its restaurants, its food packaging companies, its food chill transport companies. It is the whole cluster ecosystem. This is an event that they held yesterday on the Sunshine Coast in Australia, Meet the Makers, they call it. They, they, it's an annual event. There were 60 participating businesses exhibiting their produce, not, not to end customers, but to the trade, to restaurants, to buyers. Unfortunately, because of COVID, there weren't any international buyers there, but there were export agents who are shipping to Singapore, to Indonesia, to, to, to other markets. It's just for the trade. It's a one day event. I think 600 people were expected, uh, what I heard at the weekend. So it's an opportunity, particularly for small businesses to quickly engage quite cost effectively with a large number of buyers to test their produce, to test their packaging, to test their offerings. You'll see on the bottom a number of sponsors for that event. It's the Sunshine Coast Air Airport. There are three councils that are collaborating in making this happen. So it's a cluster like many clusters that, that covers the turf of a number of councils. I could take you into many food clusters. I've just mentioned this food and agribusiness network in Australia. I could have taken you to Tasmania, a food cluster there with a specialization in fermentation technologies. I could have taken you to Gippsland, just, just east of Melbourne. I could have taken you to many other parts of the world, in, in Lower Austria, in Catalonia, in Galicia, in Denmark, in Flanders, in Wales. Food Valley, I briefly mentioned. And a question in part for our food-related clusters on the island of Ireland is, what are our regional specializations? What are we good at doing here? And it's fine to be a cluster that is servicing the local market, if, but if particularly we're focusing on clusters as a mechanism to support export development, we need to be good at something. We need to have some specializations. And at times it takes time for those specializations to come through that can be part of the journey of, of developing a cluster. Cork talks about its technology cluster. And as I look at the logos here, I, I can see Intel, I can see HP. So I guess it's, it's a number of multinational companies here, but I sense also a number of indigenous companies. It's a mix of companies. I notice they describe themselves as a technology cluster. Let me take you into a particular technology cluster. This is Southern Norway. It's a cluster 
of engineering firms that were servicing the North Sea. It's about 70 engineering firms in total. And part of their journey has been moving from a little bit of everything in the sense of servicing the North Sea to developing a particular competency. And it's a competency that is the focus of their cluster as they describe it, an industry driven, and, and like that it's business driven for ocean technologies. Oceans is part of what you're developing an oceans cluster in the west of Ireland. But this is oceans technology, particularly its drilling technology. And this cluster today is able to say, we count for three quarters of the world market in our particular niche. So describing here a cluster that over two decades or so has moved from a little bit of everything in marine or particularly oil and gas related to developing a particular niche and now a global position. It's not small scale in terms of the regional economy. There is a clustering initiative that has been funded by the Norwegian government. There's 10 year funding in place for this. This is one of Norway's larger clusters. So the Norwegian government in part saying, cluster development is not fi quick fix. It merits long-term funding. This funding coming from the Norwegian government is co-funding. It is matched, at least matched by funding from other organizations, including participating businesses. There's a range of projects and projects are really the engine room of any clustering initiative where often it's competitors collaborating in the case here, for example, collaborating on digitalization, on big data, automation, new materials, but also collaborating in exploring how do we take our skills that we've got, the competencies that we've got in ocean technologies into other areas, offshore wind, subsea, aquaculture, geothermal and would expect any strong clustering initiative to be exploring at the boundaries, to exploring in a sense diversification, to exploring how do we take the competencies that we've developed into other areas, particularly emerging areas. This cluster in Southern Sweden is one of the 30, 35 or so clusters that are being funded by Oslo different levels of funding, and I applaud that from Norway, three levels of funding. Um, the, 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 the one I described has got 10 year funding. The, 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 some of the other clusters have got two, three year funding or five year funding, according to where they are on, on the program. So in Norway, cluster development is center stage as it is in many other countries, including these examples for clean tech. And clean tech, I gather, is on your agenda in Ireland. And making the point here, there's a number of clean tech clusters around the world. And maybe you might think these folk are competitors, but maybe they could be buddies for your clean tech cluster as well. And, and what I see often is cooperation developing amongst clusters where clusters sense, yes, in part, we compete quite naturally, but we also have opportunities to collaborate and, and would encourage your clean tech clusters, for example, to link in to these other clean tech clusters around the world, in part, to create an, an easier access for your SMEs in clean tech to engage to find customers in other parts of the world. FinTech certainly is on your agenda. And I did a session a few months ago now with this financial services cluster in, in the Southeast. And one thing I like about this cluster is firstly, it's the range of companies, it's multinational companies. It's also your homegrown indigenous companies and some of those companies like the one in the top left-hand corner already have branches around the world, they're global players. But what I particularly like is the three rows at the bottom of this slide. And if you put your eyes close, you can see it's Carlo County Council, along with four other county councils. It's Enterprise Island, and good to have them participating today. IDA are there. 
It's SkillsNet Ireland. It's a number of public agencies and public agencies that I sense in part are using the cluster network to better listen to what really are the needs of those companies and how do we better respond to them. In part, a clustering initiative helps support organizations move from a retail relationship with SMEs that can be quite expensive to in part a wholesale relationship where you can work with groups of businesses, groups of furniture manufacturers, groups of fintech, groups of marine en 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 engineering businesses. I want to drill down on one aspect the geography of innovation. And I want to make it quite clear, clusters are not, I don't, I'm not picturing them as being whole of Ireland wide. I'm picturing them as having a tight geography, a tight geography as the FinTech corridor does, stretching from Dublin up, up to Belfast, but also using the FinTech corridor to emphasize the irrelevance of borders the irrelevance of international borders, the, the, the irrelevance of county council borders, as I was describing around Wexford earlier. And there are many examples of clustering initiatives that reach across international boundaries. Medicon Valley is a clustering initiative that has been going certainly for a decade now, linking medical technology companies in Denmark particularly with Southern Sweden around Lund, some of them emerging out from Lund University. So clustering across borders, but also clustering within cities. Hamburg, population-wise, may be getting on for twice the size of Dublin, but what I see in Hamburg, as I see in a, in a, in a city like Malmo, as I see in, in many European cities, places like Lyon and France, places like Paris, is engagement on, well, firstly, understanding which are our priority clusters that merit support, and then engaging around them. One of the clusters here in Hamburg is Hamburg Aviation. And Hamburg Aviation has taken the lead in setting up a network, a European network, of 41 clusters. And if you look in the left-hand corner here, good to see Enterprise Island. The, the, the blob that goes with Enterprise Island looks as if it's on Dublin, perhaps, rather than Shannon, which is what I expect is, is, is what has been covered there. But using this example, too, to make the point that each of these regions across Europe, in Hamburg, the Basque Country, each of them have said, Aviation is one of, our, one of the drivers of our regional economies. Let's engage in a cluster mode within our cluster, but also let's see where we might link up with other clusters across Europe, perhaps other clusters around the world. I, using Hamburg and aviation as an example there, and making the point this is not small scale, 4,300 companies, many public institutions, research institutions, part of this initiative. Going to move from aviation for a moment to medtech. And certainly medtech, you've been astonishingly successful in Ireland in attracting medtech companies from the US, from other parts of the world. One of the areas where those companies have landed is Galway. And I love the way Galway has developed their cluster map that is showing, again, the co-location of companies, the geographic co-location, the tightness of innovation. None of these companies need to be here. They're here because it makes economic sense to each of them, economic sense for a variety of regions. I've talked about medtech, I've talked about aviation, and I want to come back to those two in a moment. But let me first take you to Ulu, way north in Finland, on the edge of the Arctic Circle. They talk about smart specialization in Ulu. And I want to relate the term smart specialization and clusters. 
and their smart specialization, as they describe it, it's ICT and digitalization. And that takes them into three vertical markets. It's on the left, ICT software. In the center, it's metal industries. To the right, it's healthcare. There's an organization called Business Olu that is the, the regional economic development agency. And over on the right, one of their clustering initiatives, Olu Health. And, and I'll take you to Olu Health in a moment, but let, let me make this, the, 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 this parallel. You've got in Western Ireland, competencies in aviation. You've got competencies in med tech. You've got competencies in precision engineering. And maybe a way to think about what you've got in Western Ireland is precision engineering as your smart specialization. It's a core competency that then in turn underpins a number of vertical markets, including the Medtronics, including the aviation, perhaps including the marine as well. So I, I leave that thought with you. Let me take you to Olu Health and want to use this is an example of a clustering initiative. Olu Health, particularly, it's ICT. And this is one of their projects. It's an annual project. It's a pitching competition. The guy wearing, wearing the red hat is actually standing in the Baltic Sea. He's, got, he's making a pitch for equity funding, for seed funding. Possible funders are standing on the shore. How long has he got to make his pitch? As long as he can stay in the water. That, 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 that's up to him. It's a bit of a fun element. It's a fun element that gets them on Finnish TV, Scandinavian TV once a year. So it's part of blow, blowing the trumpet. But using this as an example of a cluster that as one of its activities, particularly supporting SME growth, and here, helping SMEs find the seed funding, find the equity funding. The EU has identified 3,000 clusters across Europe. Important, firstly, this is where one in four jobs are. Even more important, this is where around half of all Europe's exporting jobs are. Again, cluster development positioning its center stage, because this really is what drives a regional economy. Succeed with the clusters, the activities that are attracting wealth to your region, then automatically the domestic side of the regional economy will grow. Clusters matter, as the European Commission identifies. In part, this is where we find the higher quality jobs, the higher paid jobs. This is where we find more frontier firms, firms that have got an international presence. This is where we find startups that have got a better opportunity to grow and to grow more rapidly. Why? Because the ecosystem around them is supportive. The specialist training is there. There's perhaps the specialist suppliers of this there, the specialist uh, faculties perhaps at the, at the university are in place. Another way of thinking about clusters is picturing yourself as an international buyer. And the world is becoming a lot easier for international buyers. If you're a buyer of socks, for example, then perhaps Datang in China is the only place you need to go to. There are two and a half thousand sock companies in little Datang. Certainly if you're a buyer of mobile quarrying machinery from Saudi Arabia, from New Zealand, you know about Midalsa. If you're a buyer of radish seeds, you know about South Canterbury in New Zealand. If you're a buyer of cold weather testing systems for aircraft, you know about Manitoba in Canada. I certainly know about it. I've been there in winter and it was minus 45. It's chilly. But for an international buyer, as I mentioned, the world is becoming easier. And the question then, for a Wicklow, for a Donegal, for a Dublin, is where do we stand out on a global scale? What are we darn good at doing? Because it's no longer a little bit of everything. 
that doesn't cut mustard in this global world. We need to have specializations that attract attention. I've described clusters, I've taken you into a few clusters, highlighted the importance of clusters. Let me move now to what cluster development is. Think of it as building the ecosystem. There's much that a company needs to do within its own boundaries. But building the ecosystem is particularly where the cluster is, what needs to be addressed beyond the boundaries. Perhaps it's the apprenticeship system. Perhaps it's the cost of high cost of transport uh, out of a region in Ireland. Perhaps it's developing a first export market for SMEs. What I was describing in many countries, including Sweden, and good to have Sweden participating here, what I was describing in, in Norway, what I see in Finland, in Denmark, in Iceland, in, Finland, in, in, in many parts of the world, particularly in Europe. But I could have taken you into Canada, taken you briefly into Australia. Cluster development coming center stage and providing, particularly for public agencies, an integrated framework. But a difficulty for you in Ireland and many parts of the world is that it's different agencies often that support investment attraction, that support startups, that support export development, support perhaps the building of a technology park or a precinct, or support workforce training, or support R&D at a university. One of the most difficult things to do in cluster development is to break through the silos here to break through what is often a clutter of support agencies and get support agencies aligned around the needs of a particular cluster. Cluster development is also helping the small guys, the Davids, meet the Goliaths that could be the, 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 the multinationals that you already have. But often it needs a broker, it needs an intermediary. It needs somebody who knows about med tech, who knows the large guys, the small guys, who can act as the broker, who can introduce and can help establish what might be common agendas between the small guys and the big guys. Summarizing here, three winning ingredients. It's about trust. It's about social capital that's helped by being geographically close, a tight functional region. Demand-driven public support, this doesn't come easy. It's getting the ecosystem aligned. And it's about teamwork, supported by local facilitation, often a cluster manager. What Bob might talk about in a moment from Tucson, Arizona, is how he, in, in a way, wearing his own hat, has acted as that facilitator, acted as that broker. To summarize here, and drawing on some work from MIT. It's firms focusing on what they do best. And like the term they use, the focus and network business model of Silicon Valley. But it's also fostering extra firm infrastructures, fostering the linkages, the infrastructure that supports groups of firms rather than subsidies to individual firms. In, indeed, in many countries now, working with individual firms through subsidies has, be, is, has been described as lazy economic development. Engaging with groups of firms is much more complex. It does need a different set of skills. Clodagh, that's where I wanted to get to in introducing very quickly, what is a cluster? Why are they important? A little bit in the engine room of what is cluster development? Let, let me hold there. Brilliant, Eva. Thank you very much for that thought-provoking uh, presentation. Um, 